We're going to live and quench the darts. We're going to push back the darkness. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now I wonder if the middle section in your mind, we're going to pray in the spirit one more time, but in your mind, you don't know what you're saying. It doesn't matter. But in your mind, think about praying for this section. And this section, think about praying for this one. Same over here, this one for this one, this one for this one. Don't actually pray for him. The Holy Ghost will pray. But we need to, in our mind, begin to think about that. Because Paul said, praying with all prayer and supplication for the saints. And we're praying for one another tonight in the realm of the Spirit. Blessing them and thanking God for them. He called That's it, you're building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We're filling up our tank for what's about to happen here tonight. Let's give him a praise now. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, who's excited to be here tonight? I know. I definitely am. So I have just a few announcements before we get started. Um, just a reminder, there will be no p.m. service on Easter Sunday. Uh, the help group is meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. in the Activity Center. And our quarterly church prayer meeting is on Friday, April 5th at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And last but not least, I'm a little jealous of this one. All Marys are invited to an escape room on Friday, April 12th at 6.30 p.m. at Easton. Uh, the cost and details are in the app, so please sign up in the app under forms. God bless you all. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah, for the Lord, he is great. For the Lord, he is mighty. For the Lord, he is good. For the Lord, he is sovereign. For the Lord, he is a healer. For the Lord, he is a deliverer. He's my God. Somebody point at yourself and say, he's my God. He's my God. Let's praise God together.
join the song they're already singing hope
I wonder if we can give him praise right now for every mountain. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. For this I give you praise. Hallelujah. I bless you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. Yay. Hallelujah. Yay. Turn to somebody and tell them something God's done for you. This is not fellowship time. This is you telling somebody that God, if it wasn't for the Lord on my side. Ah, she anda ye o kore ase tono no mohoya. Hallelujah! For that, I give you praise, Lord. Whatever's on the front of your mind, that's worth praising the Lord for. Thank you, Jesus. For every mountain. Ah, yeah. Ah. I get out of wind just walking up an incline. We're talking about a mountain, amen, something that was immovable, but God, 
You're on the other side of that thing today. Amen. Without the Lord, there was no way. There was no hope. But he's the way maker. Hallelujah. He's the God. Amen. Of impossibilities. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you can find your place as we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have our quiz team come up. Are you ready? And uh, we're going to recognize their efforts today. If our uh, senior high and junior high uh, quiz teams can make their way up here. These are our senior high guys right here, and I want to recognize some of their accomplishments in this past weekend. They had a, a tournament that they went to, and uh, I quizzed one year, and you get that box of a couple hundred verses that you've got to memorize, and it's a pretty uh, overwhelming feeling when you're looking at them all, and uh, I did it for one year. Um <laughs> I did enjoy it, but it was it was a challenge. So, uh, Mason has memorized uh, 390 verses to date. <laughs> Brendan, 217. Reed's done 130 so far. At yesterday's tournament, they took third place in the experience division. That's the toughest division. And uh, Mason and Reed made the all-tournament team for being... Uh, two of the top five highest average scoring quizzers. So I think that's... And their next tournament is an extravaganza a regional tournament in St. Louis. And it's the second week of April, so let's keep them in our prayers during that week. Uh, if they trophy in that tournament, they will be automatically invited to the national tournament at the end of July, Mason Nash has been practicing via Zoom on Thursdays all season, and we will be with them at the extravaganza. And so I think it's worthy of another hand clap of. And then I've got the junior quiz team's names here. It's Josiah Deborah, Judah Deborah, Kanan Deborah, Natalie Sturgill, and Aria Turner. And do any of you all have a scripture you'd like to say? One of your favorites, maybe? I don't want to throw, put you on the spot, but anybody? I put you on the spot. That's all right. Okay. Excellent. Acts 1 5 for the formal week. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Great job. When they were coming, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotus and Judas the brother of James. Acts 1, 13. You got one? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I, I don't know which one to do. <laughs> and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the day of gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, Acts 3-2. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 1-8. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Acts 1-1. One, one. And then uh, all that great uh, memorizing that they've done has not been without the help of their great uh, coaches, so I think it would be great if we give them a hand clap. That's awesome. Praise God. I asked him to stay up for a minute because I uh, got a little inspiration. When he asked for somebody to step forward and quote, I understand that sometimes uh, when you get up here, it's a little different. But then I thought, come out here, Judah. The lesson, the, the little micro lesson is, he stepped out with courage and said, I'm going to just go ahead. And then they all wanted to come forward. This is Judah. Send Judah first. I'm not trying to elevate him. It's just a little spiritual insight that when you don't feel like it, go ahead and step out on some faith and step out and lead and watch what God does. So thank you, Judah. Thank you for going against your apprehension and your fears and whatever else. Amen. Let us all follow suit. And then if you, uh, you can be seated just for a moment. I, uh, Sister Nash sent me a, a testimony based off of last Sunday night. We were talking about how that when you testify and you give your praise, that it becomes all of our praise. It becomes a heritage for all of us to embrace. And so all of the things God has done for you, I can embrace them as my own because God did them for you. And they're to be shared. And so she sent me a, a, an email and said, I'm not sure if you understand or are aware of this, but uh, God performed a, a miracle in their son. So I want you to come and just give us the, yeah, you. You're standing beside Judah. I don't mean to put her on the spot. I did tell her that I wanted, uh, you can just tell us a short version. That's fine. I had a feeling that was going to happen, so I brought my phone up here so I could remember what I was going to say. pastor a video that we're having trouble viewing um, of Mason when he was three. I promise I'm not showing you the video of this. He, um, it's a video of him quoting the books of the Bible when he was three years old, all of them from Genesis to Revelation. And I said, you know, this is really cute and everything, but the reason that I'm showing you this is because there's a testimony behind it. 
um, we prayed for seven years to have a baby, and we had pretty much closed the door on um, that happening. There really wasn't a reason. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, we found out we were expecting after seven years of praying for a baby. That alone was a miracle, um, and we waited, and we were excited, and all of the fun things that come along with that. Um, and at our 15-week ultrasound, the tech took um, a lot of pictures, and we left um, excited and announced that we were having a baby boy, and everything was great. It was followed by a phone call the next day um, that we needed to come in for more tests because the short, simple diagnosis was that Mesa had no brain formation. His skull was essentially filled with fluid, but no brain mass. And there was a pretty great possibility that I was gonna meet him and bury him all at the same time. So for the next 24 hours, um, they were filled with silence and stillness. I can still remember my inability to even say a prayer about the situation, which is the next part of the testimony. The same people that rejoiced with us when we told them we were expecting, after so many years of praying, were now carrying us in our grief and our doubt and prayed and sought the Lord on our behalf because we simply just did not have the mindset or the strength to do so. Sometimes you're in a situation and you know you need to pray and you just don't know what to do. And I remember that stillness and that that silence, and I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know how to say a prayer because I was so filled with grief. Um, that's why intercessory prayer is important. That's why it's important when somebody asks you to pray for them that you pray for them and you don't just say, oh, did Jesus touch them? Sometimes people need you to go to the throne for them, and it's so important. And I will always be grateful for the time that we were carried by that. The next day, we saw a specialist who confirmed the ultrasound concerns and offered to discuss options with us. And that brings me to the next part of the testimony. My husband, without hesitation or even looking at me, told the doctor there was nothing to discuss, that there were no options, and we would take whatever time with our son that God gave us. I'm thankful for that kind of leadership in my spouse to stand up for our beliefs that an abortion was not going to be discussed when I was still frozen with grief and I didn't know what to say or how to feel. He knew we both stood together on that biblical principle and was not hesitant to tell the specialist that. Girls, boys, I will always remember my teenage self praying for a husband that was from the altar. It's more important than you will ever understand until you're in a situation like this. Mason was born that year, later on, five months later, perfectly formed with a brain that amazes us today. He has memorized well over 1,500 verses with his desire to be involved in Bible quizzing and said it's part of his future ministry. God not only showed us a skull void of life on an ultrasound screen, but he healed him while he was still inside of me. And he continually reminds us and shows us how, how amazing that is because of his brain. And I, can't, I do not know 1,500 verses. I can't quote most of the ones that we're learning this year. And he just, they all do. They all just bring them out, out of nowhere. It's amazing what the brain can do when it's anointed by God. Thank you. I think we should celebrate. Amen. No brain to 1,500 verses. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. For every mountain you brought me through, over, through, hallelujah, every trial. For this I give you praise, hallelujah. For this we give you praise, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. What an inspiring testimony of God. 
There are no choices. We have a God who can do anything. Praise God. He's great and greatly to be praised. To God be the glory. Amen. You all can go down. Thank you. We give honor to all these quizzers tonight for their hard work and coaches. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Ushers, if you'll please come ahead. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We need to remember Kim, uh, excuse me. I can't quite make out all of this. Who put this request up here? Hallelujah. We're just going to pray for it in Jesus' name. God knows by Kim Griffey. Okay. All right. We'll pray in Jesus' name for this situation. For the Lord to touch your husband. Doris Coyer, Rhonda Norris need our prayers. Sister Lorraine Pittman is in Mount Carmel East, and they're thinking she might have had a mini stroke. So let's keep her in our prayers tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. The same God that we heard about that created a brain can certainly go and touch a brain. Amen. So let's just pray for Sister Elaine tonight. In Jesus' name, Lord, you are faithful. God, your word is faithful. Lord, your testimony is sure, Lord. We thank you, God, that we have hope in every situation, Lord. No matter what man says, God, you are the God of the final answer. And God, we submit these needs to you tonight, God. And we ask, God, that you would bring healing and strength and, and God, a restoration of health. In Jesus' name we pray, God. We give you the glory and the praise. Thank you for this opportunity to give, Lord, and to give our resources to you, Lord. Bless it, multiply it, use it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give.
Bless the name of the Lord. I wonder if we couldn't just lift up a thunderous praise to the Lord. He's worthy in the house. He's worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, Jesus. <laughs> You're worthy, Jesus. I bless your name. Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna to the King. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Hey, hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. I stand as a witness. You're worthy, Lord. Jesus is good. Hallelujah. Yes, you're good, Lord. You're good, Lord. You're good, Lord. You're great, God great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much to be thankful for. God is good all the time. Amen. Easter's next Sunday. I just want to remind you, only two services in the morning, but I want you to make your best effort along with myself. I'm going to reach out to my entire contact list in my phone and go through there and just invite everyone I can think of. I don't care if they've been here for, haven't been here for a month or 10 years, going to reach out because Jesus is coming. I said Jesus is coming. I know we've said that, but I am going to live with expectation that he is coming. Because he's coming for those that love his appearing. Amen. It's impossible to love something that you're not looking for. Amen. So let's be ready. Let's invite somebody that might turn their heart to the Lord. We're going to baptize one tonight already, I know of, in Jesus' name. To God be the glory. Brother Wade, please come. And let's receive Brother Wade with uh, our best appreciation for his ministry. Brother Wade, whatever the Lord's got, we want. Praise the Lord. And if you're glad about the man of God here tonight, if you're glad about the pastor, praise the Lord. You're just thankful for the Lord giving you godly leadership. Let's thank the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we, we thank the Lord for Turn Point. And I... Got here last night late, and uh, and but pulling up on the drive uh, uh, into the drive, you know, you can see progress. Praise the Lord. And uh, next Sunday is going to be Easter, of course, and it's going to be standing room only in here. Amen. Hallelujah! And we believe people are going to get the Holy Ghost because Easter is about resurrection. Hallelujah. And uh, I give honor to uh, Sister Arata. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for her. And <laughs> praise God. And all the leadership here tonight, we thank the Lord for you. And what an atmosphere that is here. Just an atmosphere of, of gratitude. That the Lord spared us gave us an opportunity. Praise God. Well, I don't know if you're excited about that, but I am. Okay, I, I want to read one verse of Scripture. Now, um, I'm not a sermonizer, so if you came for that, well, praise the Lord. I just want to let the cat out of the bag now. You're going to be disappointed. But 
I feel like God wants to release something here tonight. And uh, our assignment will be found in Revelation 4. Revelation 4. Uh, they tell us that when you, the older you get, I don't know nothing about that, but any, the older you get, um, Dr. Rogers, the older we get. Um, hallelujah. Uh, you think more with your left side of your brain, which is the side that operates by reasoning. Hallelujah. The older you get, you know, when you were this age, you just like, what? Jump off the cliff? Show me where. I see these people wearing these wing suits, and I'm like, that, what, what's wrong with people? You know? And they got this, you know, GoPro on their heads while they're doing it. I'm like, you know, I can see it from here. It's okay. I don't have to jump into the Grand Canyon to know it's deep. Praise the Lord. You know? I'm like skydiving. Skydiving. Who come up with that? I don't know, but it just don't seem right. What if the parachute don't open? You know, it's, <laughs> it's sky dying then, not sky diving. You only got seconds. Revelation 4, verse number one. It's good to laugh. You know, it's like a medicine. Revelation 4, 1, after this I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. Now this is the amplified and the verse and the first voice which I heard like the sound of a war trumpet said come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. And I'd like to talk to you for just a few moments to, uh, from this subject, after these things. After these things. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you that your word is forever settled. And that there is uh, no variableness in you, neither is there a shadow of turning. Now, Lord, I, I, have, uh, I, I want to do my best to articulate what you want said here tonight. So I pray that the living word would preach the written word. I pray that the word would become flesh. Now, I ask that the gift of faith and the working of miracles would be loosed in this house now. I ask that revelation and understanding would be released to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you believe the Lord's going to do it, I want you to clap your hands to the Lord and give the Lord a shout of praise here tonight. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord one more time because it makes you look good to God. You can be seated. I am thankful for the Word of God. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. It is a document that is a living document. It is not a historical masterpiece. It is a living Word. Through faith, we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So it tells us that because the Bible says the seed of everything is in itself. That says if God's word created one time, it could create another time. If it created a one world one time, it has the ability to create worlds all the time. 
Okay, well, praise the Lord. If God's word can create what you are seeing and sitting in tonight, I'm not talking about the building, but the land that it is setting on. If God's word can create that, then God's word can create uh, peace in your chaos. That's why I want to tell these young people up here, uh, you're not just memorizing uh, a bunch of literature, but you are memorizing living word. That's why when you, uh, that's why you ought to take that word to heart because uh, it may not happen right now, but when you get 25 and you're in a place that you don't know how you're going to get out of. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. And you don't know how you're going to get out of it. And you might be the one that next that has a medical report that says the baby don't have a brain. Oh, but I got a word that can create brain matter where there is no brain matter. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Uh, you got a word inside of you uh, that says, uh, that says, my God is a healer. Uh, my God is a deliverer. Uh, my God is a way maker. Uh, and if he made a way for one, one person, uh, he can make a way for somebody else. Uh, all I got to do is get the word involved. Uh, somebody shout, I got to get the word involved. Uh, I got to get the word involved. I got to get the word involved. Uh, that's why, young people, you need to get, the, you've got to get the word. In, when you get that word in you, uh, it, it's just memorization right now. But there's going to come a time in your life uh, where it's going to go from uh, memorization to realization. Uh, Hallelujah. It's going to go from memorization to realization because uh, the word of God is not necessarily altogether real to you uh, until you get into a situation uh, where you need that word to create a world. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, I want you to know that's why you got to get a hold of Jesus. Because the Jesus is the word made flesh. Uh, hallelujah. Now, you must understand something about the word of God. The word of God, uh, it, there is no amendment to it. Uh, you can't amend God's word. Uh, the only one that can amend the word uh, is the king himself. Hallelujah. The only one that can amend the word is the king himself. Now, the United States operates by a constitution. We operate by a constitution. And uh, people may not like it, but they, if they want to change it, uh, they've got to go to another governing body. But as it pertains to the kingdom of God, there is no amending. You can't vote and amend God's word. Uh, hallelujah. God's word is not up for a vote. Uh, you either get in or you don't. You either buy in or you don't. But you're not going to change God's word. I wish I had an apostolic church here tonight. You're not going to, you're not going to change God's word. I'm going somewhere. Now, you must understand that God's word is forever settled. It's not going to change. I'm glad about that because if God was finicky like some of us, he would, uh, you know, he was uh, finicky like humanity. He would be uh, up there acting like, you know, he would be, you would be thinking his word would never come to pass. Hallelujah. But I would like you to know God's word is forever settled. Just as sure as you're sitting here tonight, there is going to be a second coming. Just as sure as you are sitting here tonight and you're inhaling and exhaling, our God is a consuming fire. 
just as just as you are sitting here tonight uh, w- whether you believe in his healing power or not that doesn't change who he is he says I am the Lord thy God and I change not and because I change not you sons of Jacob are not consumed he said the very fact that you're not dead right now is, the, is a testimony that I am unchangeable God doesn't change his laws for nobody. He doesn't change his, his, his laws. He doesn't change his statutes for anybody. Not even for himself. Uh, well, praise the Lord. You must understand that uh, when you talk, and I talked about it here tonight, and, and Apple keeps telling me we have a loud environment, and that means I guess Siri is having a nervous breakdown. Well, praise the Lord. But I would like to tell Siri, she's going to have many nervous breakdowns in here tonight, so it's okay. Because uh, we're not in some quiet mausoleum here tonight. We are in the house of the Lord. And it's a place that's worthy of celebration. You see, I happen to believe that in his presence there's fullness of joy. You know, it's hard for you to sing about for every mountain he's brought us over. It's hard to sing about that and not get a little excited. It's hard to sing about every trial he's brought us through and not have a praise. It's hard. Now, for those that have never had God to get make a way for them, you are under, you are okay not to give God praise. But for those that have God has brought you out, you have a mandate. I am mandated to praise God. The word of God, the word of God is uh, logos and it is rhema. Logos has to do with time. Rhema has to do with seasons. Oh, praise the Lord. Logos has to do with time. It's eternally settled. When you get into a season, you, 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 you don't know how to get. God takes, when you're in a season of trouble, when you're in a season, that's why tr- you ought to not get settled into the fact that trouble lasts always. Trouble is a season. Is this on? I said trouble is a season. It's not, it's not eternal. It's temporary. And so when you're reading the Logos and you're going through a season of trouble, God will take his eternal word and bring a seasonal word out of it. Has anybody ever had that happen to you? Maybe you're not, maybe I'm the only one that's ever been going through a season and going through a season of trouble and going through a season of problems. And then God, all of a sudden, while you're reading the logos, uh, there will be a rhema that comes out of that and it will issue you out of the trouble. Oh, hallelujah. If God's ever done that for you, you ought to praise the Lord. I'd like to issue here, I'd like to issue a rhema for somebody here tonight. I'd like to issue a rhema for somebody here tonight that's in a place where they're at a place where they're in a way that there is no way out. I would like to issue a rhema to you here today and let you know that our God, our God can make a way where there is no way. I said, he can make a way where there is no way. Now, you must understand that everything that God has 
prepared for you in the spirit, you cannot get it by getting into a bless me club. Oh, praise the Lord. Everything that God has for you or he has prepared for you. Now, I'd like to tell you that no prophecy is self-fulfilling. I'm not talking about the word of God. I'm talking about a personal word. No word is self-fulfilling. Hallelujah. You have to participate with the word. You have to be a participant in the word. God's going to deliver your children. Now watch. God's going to deliver your children. Well, how am I going to do that? What do you have in the house? I have a cruise of oil. Well, I can give you a word that God's going to get rid of the, the creditors. But you have to go borrow the vessels. And you have to pour the oil. God's going to give you a great harvest. But you have to plow the field. See, I, I'm, sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm surprised and shocked at this generation that, said, that wants God to do everything for them. I got news for you. God's not going to do everything for you. Peter, God, it, Peter, uh, you're, uh, I'm going to pay the taxes today. Uh, but you're going to have to get your rod and reel out and you're going to have to catch the fish. And Oh, hello, somebody. Uh, I'm going to give you a breakthrough. Uh, I'm going to give you a breakthrough. Uh, well, you're going to have to participate with me. Uh, and if you're going to get the breakthrough, then you're going to have to do something to incorporate efforts to help me do it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to release my word with your effort. And when I release my word with your effort, it's going to be amazing. Uh, Oh, hallelujah. Is this making sense? Uh, you, you, you're going to have a great harvest. You're going to have a great harvest. Well, I believe that, but it's not just going to magically appear. Hallelujah. You're going to have to get the plow out. You're going to have to plow the fields. I'm going to give you a great harvest, but you're going to have to sow the seed. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to burst your bubble, but that's the way it is. I, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do these things, but you're going to have to work with me. Oh, hallelujah. You must know that everything God has for you in the spirit does not just magically appear. Uh, it doesn't just magically appear. God's got it prepared. God's got it prepared. It's not that he has to work it up to give it to you. He has it prepared. Oh, God, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. He already has it prepared. He's, you're, he's already got it in eternity. But it's going to manifest in time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you must not get to the place where you get it twisted. That... When uh, that everything God has planned is already or prepared is not being prepared, it's already prepared. You cannot access spiritual things by a blessing club. You cannot access spiritual things on accident. Now, this is where I want to go. Uh, you cannot do it by accident. You're not going to accidentally have a prayer life. You're not going to accidentally, uh, you're not going to accidentally get a miracle. You're not going to accidentally get in the spirit. Uh, you're not going to accidentally win the lost. You're not going to accidentally take the territory. You're not going to accidentally have dominion. Just like you're not going to accidentally repent. Everything you want to access.
success. The Bible says, Jesus says, I am the door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He says, I am the door. And he says, if you want to access it, you have to come through the door. Oh, hallelujah. You've got to come through the door. And he says, since I am the door, he says, you can't get in except I open it. Hallelujah. You can't get an anointing. Oh, I better not. You know, I, I'm just going to try to behave. When I get away from my notes, it's a dangerous thing. But I don't have notes anyway, so that's all right. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's amazing to me how these people have, have drummed up every other way to be anointed but by Jesus. <laughs> God help me. Uh, it's amazing to me how uh, we got... Please forgive me. Texas has rubbed off on me. Uh, we got idiots nowadays uh, that think you can go and camp out at somebody's grave and get anointed. Uh, better not. Uh, we got people who think they can camp out by somebody's grave and get put and get uh, the anointing of some elder. Uh, I'll tell you what you do. You'll fool around and fool around with a demonic spirit. Uh, you ain't hear what I'm saying. If you're going to get anointed, it's got to be by Jesus. If you're going to get a breakthrough, it's got to come by Jesus. If you're going to be delivered, it's... Oh, God, no. If you're going to get blessed, it's going to come through Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We are a Jesus church in here. We're not in some magical club. We're in a Jesus church. Oh, my God. He is the door. He is the door. He is the door. The Lord has begun to deal with me. The Lord has begun to, you cannot, now listen, you cannot access these things. John understood that you cannot access these things. You cannot access these things until you are told to come up higher. A door has to open. God has to open it for you. He must first give you permission. And he must give you access. But the North American church has, has tried to manipulate their way in. Oh, praise God. The North American church has tried to manipulate their way in. They've tried to entertain their way in. They've tried, they, they, they have thought that they could use their monetary resources to get gifts. Oh, God help me. We have thought that we could use our, re, our, mon, our uh, credit lines to, to get the access. And God addresses this. He addresses the churches in the book of Revelation. And he says, I've got some problems with you. You have left your first love. Y'all ain't gone nowhere, are you? Now, please don't leave me. We're going somewhere. And because uh, I'm not going to be here long. Uh, I'm building a case here tonight. Uh, the Lord tells the first church in Revelation, uh, you have left your first love. It used to be about me. But now it's about what I can give you. Uh, Hallelujah. You remember when you first came to the house of God and you didn't have two nickels to rub together, but you was just so in love with Jesus. I didn't come here to get blessed. I came here to be in his presence. You remember when you, you remember it didn't matter uh, the highs or the lows. You remember I told you, uh, Dr. Rogers, earlier just a minute ago, I told you that what the older you get, you begin to reason. Uh, but when you first come into church and you get and you get in the house of God and they start talking about God can do anything, you're like, oh my God, that's right, God can do anything. Because if he did it for me... Uh, 
I'm going to tell you what's wrong with some of us. We have learned how to think with the reasoning part of our brains. But when you come in the kingdom, you got to think with faith. Remember when you just used to love God because, it, it, I mean to tell you, you was looking for any opportunity to be in his presence. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God said, I got some, I know your works, your labor, all this stuff. And he said, but I got something against you because you left your first love. Yeah. And then he says, I, I got this other church. They, they look pretty good, but I'd like to let you know you. I got something against you because you've learned how to tolerate Jezebel. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And then he says, not only have you learned how to do that, but then he says, I got, some, I got a problem with this other church because this other church has learned how. This other church has learned how to let Balaam have control. They've gone after money. Praise the Lord. They've got false apostles and false prophets, and they're not being checked up from the neck up. Praise God. And God's like, I, I, I love this church. And he said, because I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not just going to leave you the way you are. And this is the problem with the North American church. They don't want to be told the truth. Is this on? The North American church don't want to be told the truth. At, at the very least, if they are told the truth, they want a watered down version of truth. They, they want you, you know, uh, my dear sister, you know, you have stood for before many judges. And when the judge rings the gavel down, he's not interested in how you feel about it. Well, praise the Lord. When he rings down the judgment gavel, he's not interested if you're if you are soft and you can't take correction. It's quiet in here now, but I, I'm going somewhere. He's not interested in, in being culturally correct. The judge that's the, 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 the judge does not, he, when it's God, he's not interested in being culturally correct. He's not interested in your feelings because he sees you going to hell. God have mercy. The reason why many people are in the trouble they're in is because of the instruction they have ignored. Oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. I don't know how I got here, but here I am. And so, uh, it's, it's, we've allowed, we have allowed the culture to dictate how we tell the truth. It's going to get better here in a minute, but just, just help us. We allow the culture, and now we don't, we avoid, we avoid confrontation. When there are things that must be confronted. Oh, praise the Lord. When there's things that must be confronted. If we want God to remain among us, there's things that must be confronted. I'm all about this. I'm all about Jesus is love. I'm all about that, and I believe in that. But ever so often, you got to know that God is like, I'm not just going to tolerate anything because I love you. You got to know I'll have no other gods before me. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Is this okay? I am the Lord thy God. I'm a jealous God. And so you're not going to have any graven images before me. Praise the Lord. I'm a jealous God. I'm not going to let you love something more than me. And me not say something about it. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not going to let you love that car, that new car, more than you love me. I'm not going to let you love your career more than you love me. I'm not going to let you love your house more than you love me. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to love me with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. 
some of this foolishness we got going on in the North American church. These Super Bowl parties that people are throwing in their churches. You think God's going to be silent about that? Oh, God have mercy. You think for one second you got these people, you got these people acting dumb, and you got these people up there, uh, one, and one of their Super Bowl celebrations, they had the uh, audacity to get uh, to line up like they're going to kick a field goal uh, and 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 uh, the pastor's wife gets up there and kicks a and kicks a bible like she's going to kick a field goal uh, god is tired of this foolishness god is tired of oh y'all ain't hear what i'm saying God is tired of this foolishness. His house is not a nightclub. His house is not a nightclub. His house is where his presence wants to dwell among us. It's a house of prayer. It's a house of prayer. And we have turned it into lasciviousness. And God is saying to the, God is saying now, he's saying, I'm not putting up with it. And so he said, I got this church that's addicted to the, uh, the ways of Balaam. And then he writes and he opens up in the third chapter of Revelation. Revelation he opens up and he looks at the church of Sardis. He doesn't even have nothing good to say about Sardis. He looks at Sardis and says, I don't have nothing good to say about you. He said, your problem is, he says, you have a reputation, and that reputation has exceeded my opinion. Well, praise the Lord. He said, I've got a problem with you. Uh, you know, if John was writing the book of Revelation today, he would say to the angel of the churches of North America, He would write a letter titled uh, the, to the angel of the churches of North America. And then he would say, then he would say, uh, you, you, you've left your first love. You've tolerated Jezebel. He said, you've got the doctrine of Balaam operating in you. And then he would say, you've got your reputation so high, uh, I can't even give you my opinion anymore. the truth or my and now I can't even tell you my opinion no more because my opinion don't matter and he says and he says to the church of Sardis he says if you don't repent he says I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you if John was writing the book of Revelation today he'd say to the churches of North America to the angel of the churches of North America you better repent or I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you And then he picks it up at the end of it, and he says, he picks up the end of, of Revelation 3, and he says, I got want to talk to the church of Laodicea. And he says, I want to talk to you because you're neither hot nor cold. What he was saying was, there was nothing refreshing about you. There's nothing refreshing about you. There's nothing refreshing about you. You're lukewarm. If you were hot, you'd be good for coffee. If you were cold, you'd be good for tea. But because you're lukewarm, you're not good for either one. It's amazing that Laodicea had a medical school that specialized in ISAV. And Jesus tells the church in Laodicea, you better go get you some ISAV. Because obviously you've been dipping in the wrong medicine cabinet. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, obviously you are so delusional that you don't know that you're naked, you're blind, and wretched. You, you have lost touch with the reality. Just because you got your nice uh, fancy facilities doesn't mean that I'm among you. I'm sorry, y'all. I, 
I didn't come here to be a downer. Now you just, uh, if you, if you, but if you'll hang with me, we'll, we'll go. We're, we're, it's the page is going to turn. Uh, he says, uh, and I can prove that the Lord was not among them because the scripture says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." I stand at the door and knock. And Jesus is standing at the door of the North American church. And he's saying to the church of North America, I want to be allowed access again. Uh, I'd like to be able to be invited in my own church. I'd like to be able to be made comfortable in my own church. How is it that I am the God of the church and I'm standing outside the door and having to knock to get in? Why is God having to knock on the door of your house and asking if he can be a part of your life and asking if he can be a part of your, uh, of your decisions? stand at the door and knock we don't even ask God if he, we can do anything anymore we just go ahead and expect him to back it up when we do it and God's like I'm not that kind of God uh, if you go ahead and make a mess of it uh, you better hope that uh, you better hope that you can get yourself out of it uh, hallelujah but thankfully we don't serve that kind of God we serve a God of mercy that says if you'll open the door to me I'll come in and I will restore you Somebody shout, he's knocking on the door. He's knocking on the door. He's knocking on the door. He's knocking on the door of the North American church. He says, I don't care how many meetings you have and how many, uh, how many uh, people show up. If I don't show up, it doesn't matter. If I'm not manifested, it doesn't matter. I don't think you heard what I just said. I don't care how many people you have in that building. If I'm not there, nobody's getting delivered. If I'm not there, nobody's getting a breakthrough. If I'm not there, nobody's going to get the Holy Ghost. If I'm not there, there ain't no conviction coming out. Oh, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's time to get Jesus in the house. It's time to get Jesus in the house. It's time to get Jesus in the house. Somebody said, how come we don't have miracles anymore? Is it because God doesn't work miracles? No, it's not because he doesn't work miracles. It's because you have an idol where you should have Jesus. It's because you have an idol where you should have Jesus. But when you put Jesus back in his place, which is first, by the way. Oh, hallelujah. When you put Jesus first again, he shows up in his glory. He shows up in his splendor. You see, Dr. Rogers, the, el the el elders knew a secret. They didn't need 12 steps to get delivered from alcohol. They knew that where Jesus was exalted, alcohol would be instantly cured. I'm going to tell you right now, if we get Jesus back in the North American church, it'll only take one step. I wish somebody get on your feet and praise the Lord in here. We're going a little further, but we're going to praise the Lord in here. Oh, come on, somebody. It's time to get Jesus first again. It's time to follow Jesus first again. He is the chief apostle. He is the chief shepherd.
You see, when you have Jesus in the right place, uh, and when G when they come into the house, uh, and you have Jesus in the right place, uh, they can be instantly healed in their minds. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, just don't believe it. Just look and read your Bible uh, about the demoniac of Gardera. Uh, the man that was bound of 6,000 devils. Uh, the Bible said uh, when he saw Jesus, uh, he didn't see our 12-step program. Uh, he didn't see the lighting. Uh, he didn't see who was going to be singing at the live recording. Uh, he didn't see who was going to be preaching. Uh, but when he saw Jesus, uh, he ran to him. ran to him he ran to him and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in this end time elder what's going to happen in this end time the people are going to run to where Jesus is they're going to run to where Jesus is magnified they're going to run to where Jesus is exalted they don't care if it's a shack on the side of the road but if Jesus is being magnified if Jesus is being exalted my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Uh, I know a lot of people ain't excited about what I'm saying. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, you may not have anything but a shack on the side of the road. Uh, but if you got Jesus... Jesus will heal your cancer. Uh, Jesus will heal your maladies. Uh, Jesus will get it done. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout, we need a Jesus revival. We need a Jesus revival. We need a Jesus revival. Where it's about him. Where it's about him. Our worship is about him. And since he is the one that birthed this church, and since he's the one that gave his life for this church, he should be the Lord of this church. He should be the Lord of that church. Any, anyone that gave their life for something uh, ought to have legal right to say what happens. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people in North America going to, uh, 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 you know, pseudo churches all across this nation. And they're going in sick and they're leaving sick. They're going inbound and they're leaving bound. That's because there's no Jesus in the church. But when you get Jesus in the church. And he says, you're lukewarm. And he says, I'm standing outside the door knocking. Now watch this. The Lord caused me to see this. Because if you get down, if you're not careful, Sister Arata, you will get to thinking that this is the end. That God is saying, uh, he's saying, I'm done with these, with this. You, if you get to looking at all the nonsense that's going on, you get to thinking there's no hope for this. Uh, hear me. Uh, but about two weeks ago, I was in, uh, I was in Pasadena, Texas, uh, and I was there uh, with Jason Cisco, uh, and I was getting ready to, I was getting ready to preach in Pasadena, and uh, as I was getting ready to go to the sanctuary, the Lord uh, allowed me to see uh, uh, Revelation 4.1. Uh, uh, the Bible said, after these things, uh, he said, after I saw a lukewarm church, after I saw a people that their reputation had exceeded God's opinion he said after I saw a church that had left their first love after I saw a church that had tolerated Jezebel he said I want you to see something here John I don't want you to get locked down in that so he said the Lord said after these things he said I want you to know what he said here he said I saw a door standing open he said I saw a door open for those that were willing to open the door for those that were willing to come out of that for those that were willing to make Jesus the center again I saw a door open. 
I came to tell Turnpoint, after all of your troubles, don't get locked into that, because there's a door open. I don't think you heard what I just said. I come to tell Turnpoint, in spite of your disappointments, in spite of your discouragement, in spite of what you are looking at right now, there is a door open. There's a door open. There's a door open. There's a door open for deliverance. There's a door open for healing. There's a door open for joy. There is an open door. There's an open door. Turn point. There's an open door. Oh, stand to your feet all over this house and give God some praise. There's an open door. There's an open door. Turn point. There's an open door for you. Turn point. There's an open door for this church. There's an open door. There's an open door. In the midst of your family trouble, there's a door open. In the midst of your situation, there's a door open. In the midst of your medical prognosis, there's a door. I can't see it down here. All I can see is trouble down here. But God said, come up here. 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 The door is open. There's an open door up here. There's an open, open door up here. All you see is what's down here. But up here, there's an open door. I got a message for the North American church. I got a word for the North American church. Don't get to paying attention to the lukewarm. Don't get to paying attention to those that have a higher reputation than God's opinion. Don't get to paying attention to those that have left their first love. Don't get to paying attention to those that are tolerating Jezebel. Come up here. Don't get to paying attention to what people say on social media. Come up higher. I'll show you deliverance for your family. There's an open door. There's an open door. Dr. Rogers, there's an open door right now. We don't see it because we're looking down here. When the Lord gave me this word, when the Lord gave me this word, he had put all this, what I just preached to you in the last 30, 40 minutes, the Lord put all this in my spirit. He had been showing me, Sister Arata, the state of the North American church. And I'm like, oh God, we got all kinds of junk going on. We got all kinds of scandals going on. Yeah. Well, I know what I'm talking about. We got all kinds of scandals going on. If we didn't have no scandals going on, we wouldn't have Dean Bats on social media trying to smear the name of the church. Oh God, I'm sorry. I, I'm going I'm to close here in a minute. But I want you to know, if we didn't have, uh, we didn't have a bunch of stuff going on, they wouldn't have nothing to write about. Well, praise the Lord. If there wasn't something, if there wasn't, if, if, if all this stuff in the North American church wasn't going on, they wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't have a big following. Most of them are liars. Uh, okay. 
Most of them are liars anyway. They couldn't tell the truth standing on a stack of Bibles looking at Jesus. But they want to find a bunch of trash. Uh, If there wasn't trash to collect, they wouldn't have a garbage bin. I'm going to tell the North American church God's been calling us to repentance because there's scandal under the surface there's all kinds of junk going on but God said you can't get to looking at that John there's a door open there's an open door there's an open There's a door open. There's a door open. There's a door open. But you've got to come up higher. And because I am the door, I'm the only one that can issue the invitation. And God is issuing the invitation. Come up higher. Come up higher. Get above the trouble. Get above the trial. Get above. Get above it. Get above it. Turn point. Don't look to the left or the right. Get above it. Don't let these negative people fill your your news feeds with trash. Come up higher. There's an open door. There's an open door. I want us to lift our voice and our hands to the Lord now. God's inviting turn point to a higher place. He's inviting turn point to come up higher. I'd like to say that everybody's going to get the invitation. I'd like to say that everybody's going to, everybody's going to make the trip up there. I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about into the place where you can see the door open. I'd like to, I'd like to say, but this is re- this is a, uh, for a people that have got their minds made up that I'm going to let Jesus into the church. I'm going to let him into my life. He's not going to barge in. He's not kicking the door in. He's knocking. Come up here. After I saw all these things, Sister O'Hara, if John was writing today, he'd say, after I saw all this junk, I heard a voice saying, come up higher. Who's going to receive the invitation? Who's going to act, who's going to actively participate with God? I'm all about preaching faith. I'm all about preaching the miraculous. I'm all about, I'm all about it. But for three services today, God has come to turn point. And he has said to turn point. And he has said to the North American church. I'm tired of the idolatry. I want every idol cleansed. That's what he's been saying to us all day long. I want every idol out. I want all the immorality out. I want to be in my, I want to, I want to dwell among my people again. I don't want to just be a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. I want to dwell among you. I don't want to just be a blessing God. I want to be a dwelling God. I 
I don't have no axe to grind, except we must confess. We must confess. We must confess that we are not where we want to be. And we must confess that the only way to get in is through him. And if he doesn't open the door, we're going to be on the outside looking in. If he doesn't, if he doesn't give the invitation, we cannot approach. Just because Esther was queen didn't mean she could just barge in there anytime she wanted. There's protocol to come before the king. Come in humility. He said, if you come in humility, I'll in no wise cast you out. Because I'm a, I'm a God of mercy. But God's saying, come up higher. It's time to go higher. There's a place that God wants to take turn point. It's never been. It's time, God wants to take turn point to a place of vision. It's never been. God's giving turn point an invitation to see what it's never seen, to hear what it's never heard, to know what it's never known. Answer the invitation. Come up higher. Come up higher. I want you to lift your voice now and cry out to God and tell the Lord we're coming up because you have given us the invitation. The door is open and we're going through it. The door is open and we're going through it. The door is open and we're going through it. The door is open and we're going through it. I'm not settling for low level anymore. I'm not down here eating with the buzzards. I'm not down here eating with the buzzards and the crows. We're going to soar. A door is open. A door is open. A door is open. It was previously closed, but it's open. It was previously closed, but now it's open. There was no access before, as it were, but now there's access granted. We didn't get this by giving a certain amount of money. This door didn't open because we gave a certain amount of money. This door didn't open because uh, we did all because we, of our programs. This door was uh, opened by grace. Grace opened this door to us. Mercy opened this door to us. Can you see it? It's open. Can you sense it? The door is open.
It's open. It's open. It's open. I'm not talking about just in this building. It's open in your life. God is calling you. God is calling turn point. God is calling to the churches of North America. If you strip yourself of your ornaments, if you strip yourself of your idolatry, you can come up higher. This is not about mysticism. This is not mysticism. This isn't magical. This is why God's calling for a national repentance among his people. Because we're at a crossroads. We're at a crossroads between mediocre and the miraculous. We're at a crossroads between carnality or Christ. And if you can't sense that something's wrong, But I believe you can sense it. But what's happened is we've got to this place where we're like, I just don't know what can we do about it. We're like, what can we do about it? There's nothing we can do about it. Oh, yes, we can. Brother Todd, live and good. Yes, we can. What can we do? Come up high. What can we do? Repent. Open the door. Walk through the door. And you'll find life. There's so much trouble getting ready to hit this country. There's so much trouble getting ready to hit this nation. This nation's not going to want to know, not going to know what, to, what hit them. They're not prepared for it. They're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. Elder Rogers, they're not ready for it. What's getting ready to hit this nation, they're not ready for. We've been seeing little tremors here and there. But we have been, we have been lulled to sleep by false alarms. I'm not a, I'm not a doomsday, but I do know trouble is coming to this station. And they're going to need, and this world is going to need hope. But it ain't going to happen as long as we're lukewarm. This is why God is telling the North American church to awaken. Wake up. Come up hither. Come up higher. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind I'm going through the door I'm going through it no more mediocrity I'm going through the door I'm going through the door I love I love the miracles of Jesus but Israel saw miracles every day and wandered in a wilderness 
thank God for all the miracles he's doing. But miracles can, if miracles can give you a false sense of security. Miracles can give you a false sense of security. Because you can be blessed and the blesser not be in the camp. I don't want the just I don't want blessing only. I want him. I want him. I'm in pursuit of him. Nothing matters more than his voice. Nothing matters more than his touch. Nothing matters more than his approval. Nothing matters more than him. Nothing matters more. Nothing matters more. He is the door. If you believe that, I want you to worship the Lord one more time as the man of God comes. If that's what you want. do it quickly children young people go get with your family network if you don't have members of family here just get with somebody a family
this was a word to the church, but it's a word to the individual, which we are the church. But the church will never rise higher than the families. So tonight there's been a, an appeal made by the Lord to come up higher. So the appeal really is not to the collective body as much as it is to the individuals and the families that make up this body. I can't do anything about somebody outside of here, some other church. All we can do is receive the word and be challenged by God to come up higher. To let our appetites be changed and let our focus be changed and let our pursuit be changed. That's something you and I have to decide as individuals. So if you are together with your family, would you agree together that we're going to come up higher. Our family is going to rise up higher. We're going to reprioritize some things. God, I thank you for the families of this church. I thank you for the families that make up this body, Lord. I pray, God, that you would elevate us, God, in you. You have extended, Lord, your hand tonight. You have extended a hand, an invitation to come up higher. Lord Jesus, in every way, let our pursuit come, Lord Jesus, with passion and desire and conviction, Lord. Jesus, in your name, whatever has to change in our homes and in our lives as individuals uh, to come up higher and to go through the door, Lord, let it be, Lord Jesus, that we would uh, embrace, Lord God, that invitation, uh, amen, and come into alignment, Lord, with where you want to take us, God. If we will go as families, Lord, the church will go. Lord, if we will go as individuals, Lord, our families will rise uh, to that place that you want to take us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessing, Lord, over this house. Uh, we have found favor with you tonight, God, because you have given us your word. You have given us, Lord, your invitation to come up higher. Let every hindrance be put down. Let our focus rise, Lord Jesus. Lord, let our eyes be lifted up into the hills from whence cometh our help. Ah, you are our exceeding great reward. Lord, you are our pursuit. You are the thing we love. You're the one we love. Everything about you, God. Let everything, every false god, let every idol of this world, Lord Jesus, let it be pushed down and crumbled and crushed in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord Jesus, Lord God, when people would come, that there is an evidence, God, that you are the Lord of the house. You're the Lord of our house. You're the Lord of our lives. God, I pray against deception, Lord. Deception, Lord. Those that are going to come before you and say, we've done this great thing, we've done that great thing, we've cast out devils in your name, but they didn't know you because you were not in the house, Lord. Don't let there be deception among us, God. Lord Jesus, because there are things happening, but God, the relationship with you is what must be prioritized. Ah, shika, bo, yeah, yeah, ti, yada. He wants to know us, church. He wants to be in relationship with us. There's more to God than his acts. That's what the children of Israel knew, but Moses knew his ways. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise for all the miracles and signs and the things you've been doing. But never let it be a cheap substitute for knowing you. Because if we know you, Lord, you don't have to work another miracle. You don't have to supply another need. You're great all by yourself. We value you above all things.
just reach up and love him tonight? God's not on trial tonight. He doesn't have to do another thing. We're going to leave this place loving Jesus for who he is. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you came and you picked us up, Lord, and you made us your bride and you gave us covenant, Lord. We worship you. Let us, God, pursue you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Thank you, Brother Wade, for speaking to us through the unction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, raise us up. Small people talk about people. But great people talk about ideas and concepts. Let's not waste our time down here. Let's open our eyes and say, God, what are you trying to do? Let me find out your mind so that we can follow after you. I almost forgot we've got a baptism tonight. Who's, who's, he's up here. All right. Brother Michael, are you up there? Somebody up there? Amen. Or Brother Bixby, whoever's supposed to be on for Sunday night. Would you just greet a few people around you? And uh, the Lord has deposited a word, a seed in us today. I just want you to love and appreciate the people around you, your brothers. Give somebody a hug and let them know how much you love them. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing but the blood. I want you to think back to the night you were washed in the blood of Jesus. Oh, and what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see. For my pardon, 
This I see, nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, and for my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, and oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. I don't know about you, but I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Five is the number of grace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Lord, you make up what I can't measure up to. Lord, I repent of my sins, but God, it's taken your grace to, to draw me nigh through the blood of Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Would you make sure you invite people to the house on Sunday. Amen. There's going to be people here, and I believe they are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being in the house. Thank you, Brother Wade, for preaching in alignment with the Holy Ghost. Amen.